Uh, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mitch. Mrs. Mitch uh, is not here for the recording of this part. Uh, last weekend, uh, Saturday the 28th of October, we travelled to Jamuk to, uh, to meet another group of um, Artsakh refugees who are staying in a sanatorium there. Um, and some of you might be be asking why we keep recording uh, these things and why we don't show different parts of Armenia. Well, uh, the channel is called Armenian Life with Mitch for a reason, and that is because we want to show exactly what it's like to live in Armenia at any given point in time. Right now we have a 100,000 um, refugees uh, from Artsakh who've uh, come into Armenia in the last three weeks and so it's incumbent upon us I think to um, to give you some idea of exactly what they have been through and what they're going through and their future uh, most of them um, if not all of them have lost just about everything that they own other than the clothes on their backs uh, they are located in various parts of Armenia. Some have temporary accommodation in which uh, what you'll see that uh, in this video. By the way, this uh, is in two parts, this video. The first part will show you the, um, the refugees that are staying in a sanatorium. There's about 60 of them. Some of the stories that they have to tell is well, quite confronting. Um, and indeed shocking in parts, but necessary to be uh, to be told. Uh, we need to hear what they have to say. Uh, we need to um, show them that we love them and care for them and do what we can to help them. In part two, we will show you the distribution of uh, um, children's clothes that we're able to buy for them. Mrs. Mitch bought uh, new clothes, thanks to all who donated uh, through our channel and um, enabled us to buy for for the children they're so appreciative our families are so appreciative of what we're able to give them but it's all thanks to you so um, thank you once again so part two will show you that and we'll also uh, interview a another family who lives in uh, in an apartment uh, in Jermuk a refugee family there and uh, they have some uh, some confronting stories to tell also. We will start just as we're about to enter into Jamuk. So we'll see you then. We can see snow already on the mountains. Winter big. Coming. Nature always beauty, perfect and magic and awesome because God's hands everywhere. Now, of course, uh, Jamuk. What's Jamuk famous for, Mrs. Mitch? It's uh, water. Uh-huh. Church on the distance. The yeah. big uh, Spring of water. mineral water industry mm. here. Yeah. Jamuk. Here's a Jamuk building. Mm -hmm. Yep, Jamuk group. Yep. And we're going to go across this bridge and you'll see the gorge. Yep. Or canyon. It's very pretty. So we're at the uh, Ararat Sanatorium, just off the main road here in Jamuk, and we're going to uh, introduce you to some Artsakh refugees here. So here they are. Okay, so, oh, by the way, this is Susanna. Okay. <laughs> Susanna is from Jamuk and she is very active in the community here. How many are staying here, Susanna? Uh, about 60 people right now living in this About 60? Uh, yeah, 60 people. So there's about four yeah. sanatoriums here uh, where they stay? About three. Three? Yeah, it's uh -huh. about three. And uh, yeah, they are living here, uh -huh. but some of them, if they can find some apartments or. So this is a yeah, temporary can, accommodation yeah, yeah. for them? And uh, so around about how many refugees altogether in Jamal? Yeah. 
Uh, it's about uh, 400. About 400. So 400 many of them are in apartments? In apartments. Houses too? Uh, yeah. Uh, we don't have houses no. in Jainmog. It's ap apartment okay. buildings. Apartments. Or, yeah, okay. In the apartments. So okay. The, some of them are <coughs> renting. Uh -huh. uh, for example, my parents gave our apartment yeah. just free. Ah. So it Wonderful. depends on people. Okay. Timonuna Petros. Petros uh, Mitchell. Yes, uh, Australia CM. Bites. Yes, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so we are here today with uh, with uh, these people from Artsakh, uh, refugees from Artsakh, and we want to hear a little about their story. On behalf of the people of Armenia, and I include myself as a person of Armenia, um, we. We have no words to express our deep sorrow of what's happened to you people and that you've lost your homeland. Temporarily, I might add. Whereabouts have you come from, from Artsakh? Which part have you come from? So you're most they're mostly from villages? She is from Gandasar village, which is in uh, situated in Artsakh, uh, Artsakh, Nagorno Karabakh. So uh, she is she is his, uh, her family from there and he, uh, she wants to be back and live there because Gandasar is very famous uh, you know church armenian church very old and uh, it's a historical place they are very attached attached uh, but actually but actually they yes they want to be back yeah. and to live in their uh, home place okay. i understand I don't want to cause any of them additional stress. But maybe it's important for uh, Ami the, the diaspora and uh, people outside of Armenia and even in Armenia to understand exactly what these people went through in the last two weeks. <laughs> They passed through a difficult situation mm. because of the war and uh, they were uh, inside like bombing situation. They have seen many uh, bad things. Atrocities. Yes, uh, and actually, uh, uh, her, yeah. Her husband was injured during the uh, war and right now they have some issues, problems here related to getting money from the state. Oh. Mm -hmm. So he can't get the treatment no. that he needs, right? He got stroke, span problem, uh, span injury, he had span injury and then he got stroke. So now eight months and very difficult for him. And uh, go under surgery is 50-50, very big, higher risk. His so nobody wife would... is the main, he's a caregiver, right? Yes. See, yeah, no, she's no a, other help. Yeah. Yes, no. Uh, she was also like a doctor. On the front line as a, as a, as a doctor. As a doctor. And she was in was injured too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. She said that nine months of blockade uh, were killed Artsakhians, like Armenian, uh, Armenians living in Artsakh because uh, they were lack of medicine, goods, any needs, uh, so that's why 
she said that like we were killed. <laughs> they, they couldn't do anything. They, they couldn't find anything. Genocide. Yes. Yeah, genocide. Yes. Yes. And uh, and the uh, and world, all world, yeah. listening to Azerbaijan, uh. saying all Artsakh population is separatist. Uh. How you can call these people? Here, who is uh, on wheelchair, invalid, or whatever, young children, newborn, pregnant woman, how all nation you can call separatists? I just want to understand. I want this world to stand up and see. Are you separatists too because you are supporting Azerbaijan? How come all world have pain for people in Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, other countries, but not for Artsakh? Their people here are not people? I am asking question. As a human, you can't call nation as a separatist. You can't. So people just were talking about like what kind of uh, uh, injured or something difficulties they were faced yeah. uh, during that starvation and blockade, and she was talked about that and she can explain. Is that the word to Yes, it can a Yerela mean a hitsum metri, Tarberutuna Yere, Turkere Mezanis Bartzer. Yes, Gurkojan Asume Gurkojan Eti Amusin Gnatela Vor Banaberi, after Hamar Berzin Peri, Ekatas, Rikuno, Jupor, Jrat, Erekin Tapratarat. This lady, this lady, this lady is saying. She passed through, uh, like, you know, not uh, because uh, they're talking about genocide on Ukraine, genocide on nowhere, but she's saying pregnant woman, husband went to uh, put in a car fuel, and uh, he came home, his pregnant wife uh, been very open, and new, no born child, baby, been slaughtered on the pieces. Oh. This is not genocide, genocide only in Ukraine. I can't understand why all world possessed with Ukraine. I can understand their people too. But what about Armenians? Why are you putting big line between here people, here is not people? <laughs> She went to the cellar to pick up some, like, you know, some stuff for her children. And uh, it's okay. Uh, like, you know, um, and somebody came and said to her, Stop, or I'm going to shoot you. So she got like, you know, because Shiva went through her and she was scared, she said, okay, if you're going to kill me, what about uh, my children? And Russian was staying there doing nothing. Russian soldier who is peacekeeper, just name peacekeeper, okay? Just name peacekeeper. What peacekeepers was doing, only Russia knows and Azerbaijan knows. What's the immediate situation now? How did they end up here? And where are they going from here? How long have they been told they're allowed to stay here? They are like uh, 10 people in a family, so uh, on Monday they should uh, leave the place, actually. Yeah, uh, because of uh, they wanted to uh, rent an apartment here in this community, but actually it was very pricey at expen and expensive. And she said we can't just provide like that money and rent an uh, apartment here, so they need to just live here. Uh, in the uh, 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 They want to go to Armavir region. Uh, there, and uh, two months they can live there free. Uh, so without rent, uh, renting or money. That's why they, they want to go there and maybe they can find a job. When they crossed the border and came back, came into Armenia, where did they first go? Did they go to like a uh, registration center in Goris? First, the place was Goris, and then they came to the Vike region, which is in Vyotsdor. So after that, uh, our uh, like Vyotsdor regional government. Uh, Took them here. This lady, this lady uh, looking after three children because she lost her husband. And this is here, she has three children. I just want to ask a question to the world. How can be a nation 
who have a little bit more than 100 years history uh. and like you know acknowledgement can say we was here Armenians who here on this earth exactly about more than 6,000 years mm. you is our territory yeah. how can be exactly. so where are we coming from yeah. I just want to understand all of the churches, people wake all of the up Kachikas. just read history now they're open trying up, to demolish that and open and up put... encyclopedia just read uh -huh. not because of Armenians I'm, I'm telling the truth right. just open your eyes because every single these people going through no. coming on your head coming Life is boomerang. There was a like a situation related to our like three guys. Mm -hmm. They were uh, jailed uh, when they were uh, wanted to cross the border our uh, Artsakh to Armenia. Uh -huh. But actually, Aliyev, after this all, uh, uh -huh. like uh, did some uh, massive things uh, with Artsakh flag. Yeah. Uh, why international community uh, doesn't uh, respond uh -huh. with Very good that? Point. Why? Because uh, right now we have many people arrested by uh, Azerbaijani government, uh -huh. and right now they they are in the jails in in uh, Azerbaijan. So we have many problems, but actually it doesn't work. International rights, human rights, and uh, international law doesn't work for. Yeah. Artsakhi people for Armenians. Uh -huh. uh, she, uh, she was talking about that. Why? Yeah, exactly why. Mm -hmm. And during these nine months, during the blockade of Artsakh, people were just killed and faced starvation in hunger. And uh, uh -huh. they told many like uh, about many. This is what the world doesn't yeah. know. Yeah, world well, doesn't. They know hear about one a, a part of the story, but yeah. not the real story. So, but it's important for the, our audience to understand exactly what these people have been through and are now going through. There's no uh, uh, certain future for them through our YouTube channel. Um, people have, uh, we've asked people to send some donations. They have sent us uh, some money. And with that money, we've been able to buy warm children's clothes, all brand new. And we would like, if there are some families, if there are some families here uh, that have young children aged between about three and twelve, please, uh, why don't they come here now, and we can maybe see if we can distribute some clothes. Okay. So now, uh, look, we're not able to do a lot, but I think if every Armenian, every true Armenian, uh, is able to do something to help these people and to unite mm -hmm. as one Armenian people. Nation. Uh, this is going to solve All our problems. Your problems yeah. A lot of our problems. We yeah. can't we can't know what these people are, are going through right of now. Course. They have no certain horrible but terrible what we we can trauma. do a little to help. So I invite uh, the parents and grandparents uh, to come and see what we have in the way of yeah, clothes. Yeah, but one by one, yeah. Uh, for um, uh, young children. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we don't have for adults. Yeah, okay. uh, But they're all brand new clothes. Uh, Sonia bought them. And so please, if this is some little thing we're able to do to relieve some of your pain, uh, we are grateful. Okay, thank you.